Now, shout out to Real Estate Heat TV. They got the hottest new real estate channel. Shout out to my man, real estate coach Anthony Leggins and Coach Armin Wright. They bring the heat with the latest strategies and techniques to take you to the next level. So make sure you subscribe now, right? Salute. Hey, welcome to another episode of How to Buy the Hood. I'm your host, Coach Anthony Leggins, and I am so excited tonight to have the one and only Miss Asia Dents owner of the Benson Construction Services, LLC, construction with a woman's touch. We got to say what up, though, to our Detroit people. Show what up, though? <laughs> hey, you know, let me introduce this wonderful young woman here. Miss Asia Denson has been in the Detroit construction environment since 2007, operating as an independent, capable, and conscientious adult. Asia Denson's, I think, 14 years now, right? Uh, years yeah, of construction right. experience encompasses uh, various aspects ranging from full-scale residential and commercial renovations, construction, project management, concrete testing, and engineering services. As the owner of Denson Construction Services, LLC, DCS, she works with contractors to manage, renovate, inspect, and test various, various construction sites. Ms. Denson has overseen a variety of quality control inspection activities that are designed to ensure that highways, bridges, and allied transportation facilities conform to the plans and specifications contained in contractual construction agreements. Woo! <laughs> Man, that is so impressive, Miss Denson. Go, go on and shout yourself out there. Tell us a little bit about you, just, uh, yourself and what you do. All right, what up, though, everybody? I am Asia Denson, uh, born and raised in Detroit. I actually grew up in the North End, so Westminster and Oakland, for those who don't know. Uh, to show you I'm a true Detroiter, I went to Lovin Elementary. I went to Pelham Magna oh. Middle School. In high school, I went to Cass for like a hot minute. Then I got my life together. Then I transferred with the King. And uh, I went to Jackson State University, the best school in the world, HBCU life. Uh, I was in the marching band there, high school. Well, actually, I was in the band from middle school all through high uh, college. Oh, wow. Um, what yep. instrument did you play? I played bass drum in middle school, tenor drum from high school to college, through college. Oh, okay. Okay, that's what's up. You, you're a woman of uh, multiple talents, many talents. <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I'm so excited to have you here. You know, I'm born and raised in Detroit, too, so, what's you know, it's so great to Yeah, I went to VTAL Middle School, um, elementary and middle school. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I did go to Cass Tech for a minute also, then. I ended up uh, I ended up moving to Flint, uh, staying in Flint for a few years and graduated from Flint Central High School though. But uh, oh, you know, came back here to Detroit and you know got my construction company, Detroit Home Builders LLC, and um, my real estate broker, which is called Rent Buy Sell Real Estate LLC. So, but you know, this really is all about this Asia Denson tonight. You know what I'm saying? So. You know, as a woman in construction, you know, that's so impressive. We want to know, like, when did you buy your first investment property, Asia? Uh, 20s. The, okay, I've been wholesaling for a couple of years, but the one I actually kept was in 2017. That was the first one I kept, but I okay, end up, okay. it ended up being a flip, and I sold it as a turnkey. So that was my very first one, but right. it didn't sell to 2018 because I was, being too nice, had a real bad tenant, and had to put her out, then yeah, got a great tenant, yeah. and then ended up selling it as a turnkey uh, package in 2018. 
Nice. Nice. So you did all the all the time up till then. You were doing just wholesaling and flipping. I'm assuming. Well, no, I'm, I've been in construction. I was a contract. I'm oh, a contractor yeah. first. Okay. Like I always tell people, because there is a difference between a contractor and an investor. And then I'm an investor second. So when I tell people that, it's like, okay, an investor they only care about the numbers. They care about the bottom line. They need to uh, hit their whatever their IRI is, right? I right, care right. about numbers, but I don't because at the end of the day, my name is on the product. And if the job ain't right, you know, I can't, I don't sleep at night. Like, honestly, and my whole team is like that too. So the project got to be right. I don't care about numbers for real. Like if I got to eat some costs, I got to eat it. At the end of the day, I need to put out a, a, a great product. It has to pass all the inspections and the work. I'm not a slumlord. So all the work got to be right. That That's awesome. Asia. That That's awesome you know we need more people like you that's that's that woman's test that you're talking about you know what i'm saying paying attention to those details right. like i'm particular <laughs> right. about stuff well, like that's true. My, my grout like the cabinets the countertop the grout all that has to flow for me like it all gotta match nice nice that's that's beautiful i mean that's that's definitely that construction for the woman's touch you know what i'm sure. saying no doubt <laughs> Like, you know, yeah. what, what, what's your first investment property? I know you just talked about it a little bit, but how did that experience go with you, like, just from start to finish? Uh, So I got, it was a wholesale deal that came through through my website. I have a website, uh, webuymetrodetroitproperties.com. So all oh, my okay. leads come through there. Okay. So it was a, a family. They were, uh they inherited the house that had been sitting vacant for two years after they rented it out. And they wanted okay. like 22000 for it. And I'm like, look, that ain't happening. One, I didn't have it, so that was out the door and i was like well what's the absolute lowest you would take so they went from 22 to eight thousand, and i'm like if they gonna take eight grand they'll take this five hot in the hand real quick cash money and they took it so like um i had my homie uh marcus twyman that's my dog we do a lot of deals together he's okay. a broker as well he uh okay. ran a title for me and he said hey, yeah. everything straight so it was just like a 200 dollar water bill i'm like okay whatever and then the owner paid that and so uh okay. Marcus came to the house because he's a mobile nerdy with the uh, D, wrote everything up, deeded okay. it over to me. Uh, they followed me to the bank and I gave them that cashier check and they went on about their business. Woo! Hey, <laughs> one of the best ones. I, oh, the, uh, I love that. I just I closed a deal that. like that um, today, but we did everything on email. So, like, he uh, okay. I e emailed him the D, he overnighted it to me today. It's in my PO box, so I'll pick it up Monday. And once I verify everything straight, I'm going to. Uh, Zell him the money. <laughs> Listen to this woman. She's she's brilliant. She's very brilliant. She's telling us right there how to buy the hood right there. That's what we talked yep. about today. You know what I'm saying? All right. Well, mm -hmm. how many um uh, investment properties do you currently own? Uh, right now three with that one, but this one I'm a flip. Uh, and mm -hmm. the other two are uh one is a flat and one is a duplex. But the okay. the flat, I think I'm gonna sell that one. Cause uh, it's it's a wood frame, and okay. I, like for the ones I want to personally keep, I only want to keep brick. Right. So right. I was like, um, I'm probably gonna sell because I can get probably 84, and all I did was gut it. Cause of where is that? It's in uh, it's in Island View. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, and it's gonna need, it's gonna probably need about two hundred thousand, but I can probably sell it for. I could probably sell it for eighty right now, easy. Hey, you know and that's it, what's and up. It's a full gut. You know, full of guts over here going for a hundred. So if I put it on the market at 95, I'd probably get 80. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. You know, especially right now, because people are looking right now. They hungry. Yeah. You know, they hungry to buy properties. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, especially and, uh, here, like 42. Especially in high. areas like that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, so, you know, that's that's what's up, Asia. I like that. Like, what, what inspired you to uh, focus your investments in, in Detroit, in your neighborhood, all neighborhood? Oh uh, well, I'm a I'm a Detroiter, so I look at it like this: if out of state and out of the country people are buying Detroit, why we not? And we live here. I'm like that, that was my first thing. Like Detroit is a I'm black gas city. <laughs> <laughs> like Detroit is probably 80, 90 percent black. Right, 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 yeah, roughly. Yeah, so yeah. But we not 80, 90 percent owners. There it is. You know what I'm saying? Most of the people who own houses in Detroit do not look like us. And it, and it wasn't always like that. Like before, right. probably like maybe the 90s, mid 90s or whatever, 
Detroit right. was probably 60, 65% home ownership, maybe even 70. Now it's like, yeah. I think they said 40 some percent of Detroiters is rent. Right. That's crazy. Right. Yeah, it's 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 crazy. We should be owning our neighborhoods, our houses in our neighborhoods right. where we live. But I, I think the rent. issue is really that it need to be more black owners, regardless if they're from Detroit or not, because well, I hope yeah, yeah. we not gonna do our people like others gonna do our people. There and in is. the same in the same senses, though, our people who are tenants need to respect the property and respect the owner as well. So it's like it go both ways. That's like because I've had a lot of contracts I've turned down when I first started. Like them first five seven years was really really hard for me because. I'm not a sleazy contractor. So yeah. it was hard for people to appreciate quality and integrity early on when the houses were so cheap and they didn't care. They just like, I don't care. I'm a slumlord, whatever. And I'm like, I can't do what you asking me to do at that price because one, I know the person who living there, it looks like me. So I, I can't do that. So I lost a lot of work. It was a lot of broke days because of that. But if all I cared about was the money, then, you know, I would have been straight, but I'm not like that. Like, money don't move me. So, right. I think that's I think that's make a difference that's, as far as some contractors. That, that is so beautiful, Asia. That is so beautiful. No doubt. We need people like you that are passionate. You know, that's passion that you have for what you do. You know what I'm saying? And when you have passion for something that you do, you know, it's not about the money. It's about the passion and love. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I got to be able to sleep at night. Huh? I got to be able to sleep at night. Oh, yeah, yeah, no doubt, no doubt. You know what I'm saying? I'm with you on that 100%. Mm -hmm. Now, like, you know, tell us a little bit about uh, some challenges that you face on an investment properties in the hood because, you know, it's not all good all the time, <laughs> right? <laughs> the only challenge, I, okay, it's two things. One, the appraisal amount. So, like, I had a property mm -hmm. I wanted to buy uh, on mm -hmm. the other side of Island View on a, I forgot, I think it was Helen and Kerchival. So, that's like okay. the beginning of Island View, West Village, all that little pocket, right? They wanted right. 35000 for it. All right, cool. The comps on this side of uh, Kerchival and uh, the boulevard was 200 some thousand. And it did not right. appraise for what it would be after the repair over there. And the only reason that is is because most of these appraisals, appraiser people don't look like us right so they don't know detroit so they already is under that or are undervaluing the property which makes already it harder for coming, in. coming in the gate so coming if you low-key that house was worth ninety five thousand off rip in this in this current messed up shape and by the time i rehabbed it, it should have been between three and 350 because that's what the comps are over here and it's in the mile radius across the boulevard and everything. And it's like, that's that's a part of the issue too. Like we need more good people with integrity and that cares about stuff. Like we need more black brokers, black property managers, black mortgage people, black credit people, black, we damn sure need more black appraisers. Like I can count how many black appraisers I done seen. We need more inspectors. Like, I don't know why people don't want to get into the trade, so to speak. Like, I guess because it get dirty, but it's money out here. Like, they're going to always need appraisers. They're going to always I need mean, contractors. All always going to need brokers. Time. All the time. All the time. But, so that's the first problem I have. My second issue is probably uh, our cousins. Okay. They, uh, <laughs> in securing a property, like, you, you have to make sure you secure it right because they will move in and take what you <laughs> work so hard to improve. So that's one thing. So that, that's probably my other issue. Yes, ma'am. I tell people that all the time. Secure your vacant properties. Yeah. You know, and especially in Detroit. Especially in Detroit. If you're not from Detroit, I we highly recommend that you secure your vacant investment properties. Yeah. You know, like, and you that's know that's key. You can do a basic board up depending on what you're doing. Like, okay, the house I'm about to, I'm closing on on Balfour. It, it got a basic board up right now and it can stay like that until I'm done demoing. But once them wires start running up and through there and that new oh, duct yeah. work, it's going to be some sealed doors on that baby. There it is. There it is. Yeah, I seen uh, on your on your email uh, signatures. What What's that uh, security company that you recommend? Uh, dogs, door and window guards, and they actually out of Chicago. They ain't even okay. a Detroit company. They came over here when the market crashed and just been killing it ever since. 
Yeah, I see. They they secure properties like a bank vault. Like, you know, they come yeah. slapping on there, don't they? You mm -hmm. know, and it's That's worth that investment because I've, I, I just did an episode. Actually, my last show, I was talking about the experience where I built a development company where I was buying and fixing and flipping the properties and doing mm -hmm. property management and all of that. And mm -hmm. we became, you know, like wildly, you know, successful with it. And then I just had like a series of orchestrated break-ins where they like just broke in seven of my properties at like within one week time frame, they broke into seven of my properties, two other additional investor properties that I was also managing, stole everything. I mean, everything, kitchen, yeah. bathroom, uh, furnace, hot water tank, tore the wires out, the, took the plex, oh. plex plumbing out. I mean, it was it was like- and You know what, all they did was take that shit and go put it in their property <laughs> or- Hey, but you know what the problem with that is? The people who stealing the stuff is the people who buying the stolen stuff. If y'all stop buying the stolen right. shit, they ain't got nobody to sell it to. Like, I don't buy stolen stuff. So people are like, hey, I got this, I got that. Nope. If you don't cover the receipt, I don't want it. Because if something is wrong with this faulty equipment that you stole and probably didn't even steal the right way, I can't go take it back to Home Depot. Right. You know, and that's some of that stuff is junk. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, so I mean, you know, especially if you're not a person that's proficient in in that type of stuff to know how to test it and know if it works, you can just be throwing your money away. You know? Yeah. So I yeah, go go to somewhere reputable to get your uh your 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 home improvement products. You know what I'm saying? Like, I've like, only had I think I've only had maybe three or four break-ins in ten years. So that that's wow. pretty damn good. Yeah, man, that's, that's, that's like a gold medal. <laughs> yeah, the, the first break-in was uh with a company I was rehabbing for, and they just had a security alarm on there, and they was like from Cali. I'm like, that security alarm on there to these Detroit people? He was like, where well, the police don't come? And this was when the when the uh when the city was bad, like when we ain't had no street lights. I'm like, the police ain't right, coming, and right. if they do come, they ain't coming over on Duchess and Maross. They not coming. Oh over no, here. no, they they want they're not. The cousins They're came not. there and took everything. They took the cabinets out. We just put in. They took our tools, everything. So since then, my team no don't leave nothing on the site. Even with dogs, now with dogs is. on there, we leave stuff. But there it is now. Like projects I do for people, they don't put dogs on there. I, I'm not doing that rehab because yeah. you got to secure the property. Yeah, and then and I tell you know she like, means dogs up? that dogs doors and windows are uh, yeah. not not like you know uh, pit bulls. Well, some, some people do pit pits in their <laughs> in their property too though. Pit uh. Four or five pits in there will be good protection too. Your house won't smell like dog shit, but ain't nobody hey, gonna come up in there. Ain't nobody, hey, they they definitely gonna stay up out of there with that. You know, we yeah. talked about you know some of your solutions to to the challenges that you were facing. Uh, so, like, what are your future investment goals, Asia? Uh, I want to start building uh the property I own on Kirchival and uh Cadillac. I call it Big Red. It's oh, okay. a two unit <laughs> on Cadillac and Kirchville, and then going down yeah. Kirchville, it sits on a lot. So, like, right. I want to build uh, another two unit on there. So, that's why I'm going to sell uh, par my parking property in Island View. I call that one Big Yellow because it's yellow. So, I'm going to sell <laughs> that one so I All can right. finish this one, pull okay. the money out, and build on the land. That's what's up. So, I that's was like, well, up. I don't want to sell that one, but me selling yeah. it is going to help me elevate a little bit faster. Then right. if I go on to try to rehab it. So, I mean, it ain't no emotions in properties, you know. And I tell right, a lot of right. my female clients, like, y'all got to take y'all emotions out of it. Because if you don't, you're going to over rehab it or you're going to miss a great opportunity to, you know, do something better. Man, she is just dropping so much jewels for you tonight. I'm so happy to be on this episode with you and being able to hear this wisdom and knowledge that you were sharing about buying the hood and especially, you know, with the woman perspective, because it's important that we all, men and women, you know, we all get involved and active in buying communities. And, you know, even if we could just buy one at a time, you know, that's how you get started. You know, you got to start where you're at. You can't yeah. start where you want to be. You know, you can envision your goal and work towards it, but, you know, you got to start where you're at. And a lot of people get discouraged because they want to, you know, catapult, I guess, you know, straight to the to the top of the game with it. But, you know, steps involved. And you just heard what Miss Denson just said about, 
you know, she's using that one property as a stepping stone to sell it, to be able to go to another level of where she wants to get to. So, I mean, you know, you got to start with where you're at and just continue to build from there, you know. But what, what advice would you give Asia to new investors? Uh, my advice would be one, don't listen to these people who say like, you got to quit your job because that's not true. Is I know a lot of people who have jobs and they're still invest and do stuff too. It's just Very true. balance. Very true. But you don't have to. Um, I true. unfortunately didn't work while I was investing because I got laid off, so I ain't had no damn uh -huh. choice. So, uh -huh. but for me, yeah. it was a blessing in disguise because I don't think I would have bust my ass as hard. Because when you broken your back against the wall, it ain't nowhere else to go but up. So that's how. No. I did it. And my thing right. is that. I got this engineering degree, so if this don't work, I can always go back and work with this thing I look good. <laughs> don't say that. Oh my God. Well, we can so with it tonight. <laughs> it wasn't that many black owned, it's not that many black owned engineering firms. So I, I was working right. with a lady and she ended up up and just closing and moving uh to North Carolina somewhere. So Oh wow. Wow. Yep. Man, that's that's uh you know, just what you're doing and just, you know, touch a little bit about, you know, I heard that you're doing some things. I got that uh, event bright about you doing like, what's it called? The What Up Though Mondays or Fridays or something like oh, that? Oh, yeah. So it's, uh, so we're doing this on YouTube live every third Thursdays. Uh, it's, okay. it's called What Up Though Fridays because we from Detroit, okay. of course, okay. What Up Though. Right. Right. And what Friday is like, you know, the kickback day in the city. So right. it's me, right. Marcus Twyman, Emma Elder. She owns Detroit Title or is the co-owner in Detroit Title and Escrow. I don't know if you closed your deals with them, but it's one of the two okay. Black-owned okay. title firms. Yeah, it's one That's of the really two nice. Black-owned title firms in the state. It's only two her and Red Title Carpet, I think, or Carpet Title, something like that. So okay. uh, it's just us on there kicking it, like how me and you talking. It's just like yeah. that. And we talking about all things Detroit, investing, of people ask their questions, and we just kicking and chilling. So That's the one good. this upcoming Friday has uh, Ponzi Clay. He's a broker and a, a real estate attorney. So oh, he'll be okay. on there talking about uh, evictions and squatter rights and stuff like that because that's, that's a big thing, especially in the wintertime. That's like when squatting is kind of like at an all-time high because it's cold. So. Yeah. Well, tell people what squatting is if they're not familiar because it's really – you know, a largely a Detroit phenomenon. Uh, okay. In lamest terms, squatting means you don't own a property and you literally just bust up in there, move in, get lights and gas and water turned on in your name. Uh, some people will even make a fake lease or a fake deed because there's a lot of deed fraud in Detroit. That's why I tell people you have to have a really good team here because unfortunately there are more bad contractors than there are good and i'm a contractor i'm, I'm telling y'all the, the honest to god truth that's basically what squatting is so squatting laws have changed over the years because it was getting right. really bad like right. bad and right. he's going to talk about like the new laws like because i okay. think now you got to like call the police or something to get them out once you show them the right. deed but right. yeah. then they yeah, could they... come to the door with a deed and then if the police is like now y'all got to fight down the court or you got to legally evict them so that's 60 90 days right there Hopefully, during yeah. that time, they don't burn your damn house down. So right. I tell everybody, before you start the eviction process for a tenant or a squatter, if you don't have nothing else, you better have some damn fire protection. Because <laughs> your house will be standing today, and it will be ablaze tomorrow. I done seen it happen. And all I do is bust out laughing because we thought I was lying. Oof. Like, I'm I'm from Detroit. Oof. Like, on the way. We try to tell them. I try and tell them too, Asia. They, I mean, you know, because they never have experienced it. And since Detroit is so unique to other yeah. cities, I'm assuming in the whole world because of the, all the people that I've even dealt with personally from all over, you know, Hong Kong, China, Japan, mm -hmm. uh, Israel, Brazil, mm -hmm. you know, Paris, just, I mean, uh, Canada, you know, you plus all around from, uh... the United States. From Iceland or Greece or whatever, because I think I got. Well, I haven't personally. One. No, I haven't personally dealt with anyone there yet. But hey, I'm if I'm I'm open. It's, it's gonna happen because I got clients <laughs> like I got a client. I got a group of clients. It's like an investment group from Israel. I met them some years ago. They found me on Instagram, flew over and met me, and everything. I was they like, come here, don't over. they? They come. Fly here. 
they yeah. come yeah. like Israel down the street. Like they come. Right. They they will fly here. One a gentleman, you know, I loved him. He came all the way from Japan. He said it was a 23 hour flight. And I said, man, you came long flight all the way from Japan to Detroit just oh, to come, to, you know, kick in and see some properties. Like, man, you guys are serious. But the ones you know who do that, I moved them to the front of the list because you serious. Oh, because you, all the way you to the front. Some yeah. money. You had yes, to spend some serious money to get that oh, yeah. flight. That's a first class ticket. I hope you ain't in coach on no 23 oh, hours. Oh. So that's first class. Oh. You had to come here, you know, get a rental car, yeah, you, get a hotel. You you know? VIP. Yeah, you're yeah. definitely VIP, you know, to come to pick you up, luxury vehicle, we tour in the city, you know, all of that good stuff, you know, mm -hmm. and, but, you know, I am so happy, Asia, we're going to go on and get ready to wrap it up. I think that, you know, you shared so much knowledge and wisdom and insight tonight, you know, from a, ex a experienced professional perspective, from a woman in construction perspective, from a person that's passionate about her neighborhood and what she does perspective also. So mm -hmm. go on and, you know, if you've got anything else you want to say before we wrap it up, go on and shout, shout it out right now, Asia. Okay. Oh, well, thanks again for having me on here, first and foremost. So I do appreciate that, uh, my fellow Detroiter. Uh, to everybody tuning in, uh, Detroit is a great city to invest. Just You just got to know what you're doing, just like when you go to any other city and invest. Uh, get you a hell of a good team. Uh, most people don't want to pay for my team, but the stuff that we come with, you're going to have to pay for. And uh, my construction team is like journeymen journeymen cost bread they know that cold i ain't got to go over there and babysit them and if that's not if that's what you're looking for now if you want a contract that you got to pick up drop off buy them lunch every friday deal with them getting in and out of jail every other week baby mama mm. stuff like okay then mm. you're gonna pay a cheaper price and your project mm. gonna take 17 years to finish because you're dealing with all this mess. <laughs> so i'm just saying like you get what you pay for in construction <laughs> Real estate, you know, getting yeah. your hair done, like it all is all the right. same. So right. I just say all right. that to say, despite all that, Detroit is a beautiful city. It's more than what they show right. on TV. Like we got some of the most brick houses in the country. We have our own water right. source. Our water yeah. supplies, uh, uh, what's the company? Afterpure Water and all these other places. We got our own oil refineries. Like Detroit yes. is a dope ass city. You just have to yes. know how to maneuver through here. You know, yeah, and. You got to let us do our job and you got to trust us just as much as we got to trust you. But, you know, unfortunately, there are, you know, some bad apples in the bunch. I mean, that happens too. Yes, ma'am. And I actually, I wrote a book a few years ago called Detroit Real Estate Handbook. And I touched on, yeah, I, yeah, I touched on uh, a lot of those things about, you know, the things that you need to do when you're investing in Detroit real estate because people don't understand that it's a different ball game. And that's really what, you know, Age is trying to tell us right now is that, mm -hmm. you know, it's different here, but it's great, fantastic opportunities. Detroit is a beautiful city. Downtown is thriving, hopping right now. Hopping. You know, and I it's remember, spreading out wild uh, Do you remember when you had cities. to take the bus? Remember, remember how Cadillac Square used to look and how it look now? Right. Oh, my God. Yes. Complete different. Oh, wow. <laughs> Yeah, that's a complete 180. I mean, it's so beautiful. You know, mm -hmm. we, we we encourage you to invest in Detroit. You know what I'm saying? Get with Miss Denson here at Ace of Denson. Denson Construction Services. Check out our YouTube page. Subscribe. Get with her. I'm Coach Anthony Leggins. This is How to Buy the Hood. And we out. Everybody. Uh -huh.